that I had to ask myself, why don't I love cooking? And I realized that it was because of death by a thousand cuts. When lots of minor irritations slowly lead to a complete failure of the system. And that's what happened with me and cooking. I wanted to change that. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on another video. In today's video, I'm gonna talk you through my kitchen organization, why I did it, how I did it, why I think that you might wanna consider doing it too. Now, you guys, it's crazy. I'm a whole grown woman and I have never in my life up until just now, just now meaning a few weeks ago, sat down and thought about how am I supposed to organize my kitchen? I've lived in so many different flats, houses, apartments, What's the difference between an apartment and a flat? Anyway, I've lived in loads of different homes and it was getting to the point where everywhere I'd live, I'd be like, oh, there's not enough storage space. There's not enough storage space. Until I suddenly realized, oh, it's me. I'm the problem, it's me. I was like, yeah, we need to figure that out. Since I did this, I've been cooking so much, but not only have I been cooking, I've been enjoying it. I've genuinely been like excited for mealtime. So I'm like, ooh, let me go in my kitchen and get this and get that. So what did I actually do? The first thing that I did was I put all of my spices up on the walls around my cooker and I decanted them all into the most gorgeous glass bamboo lid containers. It took forever. It took forever, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, it took a long time, but it is so worth it. You guys, cooking is fun. I use all of my spices. I see them. I add a little this to the dish until my ancestors are like, enough, my child. And I'm like, yes, so. And I love it. It's so much fun and it looks really cute. And it's also really like, aesthetically pleasing like everyone who's visited has been like oh oh it's like it scratches an itch in your brain these jars are amazing i got them from amazon i will leave the link in the description box as well as the link to the racks they fit perfectly and it all looks gorgeous it comes with the labels i did buy a label maker but i was like first of all it's long i cannot be bothered second of all these came with the labels they're pretty good and then if they don't have the label you need you can just write it on so for example my curry goat seasoning and my jollof seasoning for whatever reason they didn't have a pre-made jollof seasoning label super weird um and so i just wrote that on myself but i kind of love that because it feels like feels homely like oh this isn't just for the gram it's me that's my handwriting on the wall not just gonna print another label like this is homely this is sarah's kitchen you know i don't know something about it that i just love one great thing about these racks is that they come with two options you can either mount them with nails or with adhesive hooks i chose to use the hook and my goodness they are super strong and sturdy just be sure to clean whatever surface you're using with alcohol first to make sure that you get the best grip you simply slide the rack onto the hooks and voila it was great to be able to use them on my tiled kitchen backsplash in a renter-friendly way without making a mess. That brings us nicely over to my breakfast bar. In that breakfast corner, I have all the other things that I love to have for breakfast. So in the cupboard just above, I've got the chia seeds, I've got the flax seeds, I've got the sesame seeds. Not gonna lie, I don't really use... I only use the chia seeds, not gonna lie to you. But I do have the honey as well, which I love to use, and my vegan protein powder, which I love adding to a smoothie. I have green smoothies most mornings. When I do a food shop, I like cut up all my veg and put it in bags straight away. If you wanna be a smoothie person, don't think you're gonna be cutting up fresh fruit and veg every day, unless, unless it's your job, then maybe you will. But if you're a busy working person like me, then it's so handy to just have them already bagged, ready to go. Um, so that's what I do, and I and it's all in one corner because my freezer's right there, my Nutribullet's there, and it's all there, ready to go, and it makes my mornings so, so beautiful and peaceful, and I love it. I'm so, so grateful. So yeah, that's the breakfast corner. The next thing I did was switch all my utensils to wood and stainless steel. I do have a couple of silicone ones which came with a pot set that I got, but I did switch all my utensils to wood. I love this, not only because they're super cute, look how cute, look how cute, they're so cute, but it gives me a better a place to store them because they're cute i'm happy to store them in a visible place so what i got were these really cool under cupboard like hooks which spin around you guys so everything is accessible i absolutely love them and it's a great place to put it so i put the stuff near the cooker where i'll be using it and that was a big thing about my kitchen organization was just deciding that i want everything to be convenient it's like that moment oh my gosh it's like that moment on modern family where cam reorganizes uh, gloria's kitchen and she's like where's he put everything she's like cam where is my chopping board and he's like 
Where would you want it to be, Gloria? Where is the cutting board? Where would you want it to be? Yes, right here next to the cheese crepes. And she's like, reaches down, she's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But she's mad because he moved her stuff in her kitchen, which is completely fair enough. But basically, I wanted to camify my kitchen. I should, that's why I should call this video, how to camify your kitchen. But what I did was I just thought, what do I do in this area? What do I need to do those things? Let me grab the bits and bobs and put them right there. You want as little friction between each thing you do in your kitchen as possible. And that is what I have. Anyway. We move along, we've got the plates now in a pull-out drawer as they always should have been. Lord knows why they were in a display cabinet, darling. Why, why, for who, for whom, for what? Anyway, they're where they're meant to be now. The new way that I store my bottles and cans, tomato puree, your chopped tomatoes, your oils and whatnot, I used to have those in a cupboard just in a cupboard and they'd be so invisible so I couldn't see them all. But instead I've put them into these pull-out drawers in my kitchen so I can see them all. It's amazing. So everything is visible, I know what I have and it's right where I need it to be. When I need the oil, it's one move away, baby. It's one move away, it is right there by the stove, which is brilliant. Now, you're probably watching this thinking, Sarah, this is very easy for you to say and do because you have an amazing kitchen. And to that, I would say thank you, I really appreciate you. God is good, I'm so grateful for my kitchen. And you're right, it is amazing. However, I was so ignorant of how amazing my kitchen was because I wasn't using it correctly. So I encourage you to say, while you might have a different kitchen or a smaller kitchen, there's a good chance that like me you are not using it to its greatest potential i would always look at these pull-out drawers like what are they for they're so awkward why would i want these who put these in a kitchen and why because i just didn't know how to use them properly i used to keep my drinks of alcohol in there so like vodka and whatnot left over from gatherings or parties i would put in there and that was just a really silly way <laughs> really silly place to keep them because i don't need to use my vodka every day so why is it by in such an accessible place anyway so that was that my pots and pans I, oh guys, the way I used to store my pots and pans was in a deep cupboard where you could not see the back. They were all stacked on top of each other. So when I needed the frying pan, I'd have to lift off all the other pots and pans. And it was long. It was truly, truly long. It was too much effort. It would annoy me. Like, it would actually annoy me. And looking back, I'm like, I don't know why I did it like that for so long. But what I decided to do was to give away all my old pots and pans and to switch because I'm trying to be more health conscious as well. Um, I've switched to ceramic. Because ever since I heard about the teflon scandal you guys i was like whoa that's wild that's wild i got these ceramic pans off amazon they're good they're functioning they do the job you guys i actually low-key love them and what i love about it is that it makes them displayable so the stuff that i use often like this tiny little pot and this frying pan is right there or i literally would have to open a cupboard lift a load of heavy pots and pans off the frying pan whereas here i just pick up the frying pan I just pick up the frying pan and it is life changing. So I cook way more and it's easier. Also, I gave away and cleared out and just moved to different places a load of stuff in the top cupboard. Um, so I can, all my pots and pans are in the same place, but those are the ones that I use less often. And the stuff that was in there, I actually moved to a different spot because I just don't need to use them every single day. And then we move over to my mugs, my hanging glass mugs. Oh, love a mug. I have a mug of coffee. Well, sometimes a glass, especially in summer because it's hot, so I have a nice coffee. But I use these cups every single day. So why are they in a cupboard? They're cute too, so let's put them on display. So what I got was these under cupboard, like, mug hangers initially i got these ones from bm bargains because you guys know i love a bargain you know i love a bm bargain i got these ones from the shop for like two pound fifty but when i tell you they were bending they were sagging they were just really poorly made so i cannot stress this enough get good quality ones don't be cheap like i was i took those things back so fast i was like no wonder they're two pound fifty they may as well be made of, of velcro I went on Amazon and I read reviews, like just read the reviews. I'll link these below as well. I'll link everything in this video below. Um, read reviews so that you know that they actually work well because these ones can take the weight, they stay up, they slot in, oh, so satisfyingly. In this cupboard then, I now have my glasses displayed nicely because it's a little bit sheer, it's not completely see-through. Um, so you can see through little bits, but I've got the cocktail set in an accessible place. It used to be in the other drawer next to it and it actually didn't fit in the drawer. So getting it in and out was more hassle than it was worth. Whereas now that it's in a lovely accessible place, I make cocktails more often. If I've got a friend around, I'll be like, ooh, do you want a cocktail? And we'll like make a little shiggy shiggy. I love doing like the, um, 
the salt glass rims, salt, and no, no, I do sugar. The sugar glass rims, it looks super, super cute. As you can see, I've prioritized what level stuff is on based on how much I use it. So I've got like the mugs and stuff on the bottom shelf, and then I've got like my to-go cups. So if I'm in a rush in the morning and I'm like, I gotta take this coffee to go, or if I'm just going somewhere, <laughs> then I've got my to-go cups there. And then on the next shelf, I've got my glasses that I use for water. And on the top shelf, I've got like my fancy, my fancy glasses. First of all, this whole cupboard I bought, it did not come with this kitchen, but I knew from my previous struggle that I need more kitchen storage because I never used to know how to organize kitchen storage. So I bought this when I moved in and it has been brilliant. I will link it in the description box of this video. But the first thing that you see here that is new are these glass holders. You guys, I love to host. I have a 12 seater table, which means I need a lot of glasses, but I was gonna like get some storage for like here. I was gonna get like a glass cabinet and put it here, but it was super expensive. It's like hundreds of pounds. And also I didn't want any more furniture. But then, praise the Lord, I found the solution on Amazon. Not true, I found it on another website, but then I found a better value one on Amazon. And they are these glasses hooks. And I love them because the glasses are upside down, number one, so no dust gathering. Number two, it's visually pleasing and aesthetic. Like I look at it and I'm like, oh, look at those shiny glasses. Number three, they were super easy to install. Me and my boyfriend installed them and it was, yeah, it didn't take long. Although I will say the nails that they came with were very short to the point where I was like, they're too short for the wall plug. So they're like drilled into the wall. Guys, I'm such a DIY girly now. I've put up my own shelves. I've used the drill so much to do so many different things around the house that like now I actually know what I'm talking about. I'm like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, babe, these, these nails are too short for these plugs. Anyway, so one of them kind of came out of the wall. It's fine, it didn't fall out, it just drooped a little bit. So I just took it down and got some longer nails and now it is sturdy as a rock. So yeah, love those. I can store all my glasses and also you can store so, so many of them. And you might be thinking, Babes, isn't that out of reach? Number one, I don't use my wine glasses that often. I don't, I'm not a big drinker. I find a bottle of wine way too much, <laughs> like literally half a glass. And I'm, I know I've had a glass <laughs> from half a glass. Um, so I don't drink it very often, but I can actually reach it. I can reach it and I'm five foot three and a half. So yeah, just put it at a height that you can reach and you're good to go. And I also like the way that it kind of ties in this unit with the rest of the kitchen because they were different heights, but now it's like visually pleasing. Next up, I put my big drinks dispenser, which I rarely use. I probably use it once every summer for like a gathering, but I put it up there because it's kind of cute and because I want it out the way. <laughs> and then we've got my coffee corner, which I love. Things I changed about this coffee corner you guys I don't know what I was thinking on my coffee corner I used to have just this big chunky tray which you'll have seen in my previous videos this big chunky tray which stored all this stuff four cafeteers why did I have four cafeteers I don't even use them I use my coffee machine and I had all this stuff and I was like okay what do I actually use every day number one and what is visually pleasing so I got rid of all the rest of it I put it in a cupboard because I'm like I don't use it every day it doesn't need to be taking space on this side so that meant it saves space because I never had enough space to actually put down my mug in the morning and that was really annoying so I was having these little frustrations in my day based on my own decisions. I was frustrating myself based on my own decisions. That was stupid. You guys, wait for this reveal. Ta-da! I'll try and time that well. But basically this cupboard, these cupboards are gorgeous. I got these jars, these square top jars on Amazon and they're amazing. They are absolutely amazing and I love them. I love them so much. I got square because my cupboards are square and I didn't want the circular ones because I don't want to lose, you know, if you've got a circle in a square, I'm trying to do a, a diagram for you, like that. I didn't want to lose that space there, you know? I didn't want to lose that space. So I got square ones because I thought that would fit better. And they do, they're amazing. I got so many of them and I decanted all of my stuff. So all this food that was in a bags, I put them in jars. And what that has meant is that I am cooking so much more. I see, I, I know that I have whole wheat fusely. Because what I had before, you guys, was I would have like four different bags of pasta. You know, you buy some pasta, right? You eat some, but you don't eat all of it. And so it's fine. You just clip it and put it in the cupboard. Just chuck it in there. And then you do it again. And you do it again until you've got like five different shapes of pasta. But not enough for a meal. Whereas now I'm like, 
Babes, we don't need pasta. We have like four different pastas. It is life-changing. So I always used to think, why do people decant stuff? Why did they do it? But you guys, the visibility of your food is worth it. I've already saved so much on different shaped pastas. Aside from that, the one that I really love, because you guys know I love to bake. I love to bake a cake. The one that I absolutely love are the flowers. I like the flour, the sugar, the brown sugar, all of that. The reason I love this so much is because I also got these absolutely gorgeous measuring cups on Amazon and oh my goodness they are so much fun it makes making a cake so much easier I always used to get really frustrated with recipes <laughs> that said cups instead of grams and I was like what do you mean what's a cup I didn't realize there were literal cup measurement things you guys you can tell I'm a self-taught baker that was just stupid of me but anyway now I can do whatever recipe I can either weigh it or I can use the cups and the cups are actually so much quicker so I keep them up here on the side the inside of the drawer and I love it they look super super pretty getting the flour out is so much easier you guys like it is worth it these jars are gorgeous so these really large glass bamboo lid jars they're airtight and it basically means I can scoop out the flour really easily because back in the day when I would have the paper bag the paper bags would rip there would be some flying off here there and everywhere so this is so much tidier everywhere has a home everywhere has a home so it just doesn't get as messy and I'm so so grateful to God for that and um, then I've got my teas I love to offer a guest a cup of tea to the point where it was a problem I had so many different tea bags and I was like, okay, Sarah, stop being so people pleasy. Like it's okay if you don't have the very niche type of tea that that person has asked for. I'm trying to whittle down my collection. So now I have like, I don't know, was it six, seven types of teas? And, and that's good for now. So, but it's basically easier because before I had all these different shaped boxes and whatnot, and I couldn't see it. Embarrassing, how are you gonna offer someone a tea and you don't even know what types you got? Whereas now I can be like chamomile, lemon and ginger, green tea, peppermint, black tea, blueberry and something if I remember blackberry some kind of fruits one but yeah so teas life-changing and then below that I've just got all of the like coffee stuff that I don't use every day but I might sometimes use and that's great and then below that I have an empty drawer which is just amazing you guys I gave away a load of stuff I'm not gonna lie I did give away a load of stuff but the fact that I have an empty drawer in a kitchen that was heaving heaving with stuff is amazing then below that to the side of that I've got all of the pastas and everything and underneath that is where I keep all my drinks way way better place to keep it it's dark it's cool it's put away it's not somewhere that I go to every day because I don't need to go to it every day but I do go to it frequently so it's just a really good place for the drinks they're heavy so them being on the the ground floor they don't wobble when I open the drawers like they used to in the plant ones who knows why I was storing drinks in there so that's been brilliant and then my cupboard of shame it's not even a cupboard of shame it's not even a cupboard of shame let me take that back my cupboard on the right is full of boxes at the moment because I'm still deciding exactly how to best store these things but they are basically boxes full of things that I use but just not enough for them to have their own jar because these jars they're not, they're not super expensive but they're not cheap so for me I don't cook Nigerian food that often I know auntie I'm so sorry I'm so sorry you it's just a lot of work it's a lot of work so I don't cook Nigerian food that often but I do have like mountains of pounded yam and agussi from the times that I have cooked it. Why is there a hair in my eye? It's the braids fighting back. They just heard that I don't cook Nigerian food and they're like, oh, we thought you was, you thought you was. Anyway, so in here is where I keep the stuff, but what I've done, even though they're not visible in the box, it's labeled. So the next time that I'm inspired to cook agussi, I already know that I have crayfish, I have locust bean, I have all of those things and I can see it on label. Then I have my cake decoration stuff, so not my baking stuff, my decor stuff. So like the fondant icing, the ready-made buttercream, all these things that I use, but not that often. They're all in there and they're all labeled. And then I've got a box that's full of refillables. So for example, as you can imagine, if you pour out the brown sugar into the brown sugar tin, you might have more in the bag than there's space for in the tin. And that's okay because this is my first time decanting. In the future, I'll just buy smaller bags for the stuff that I don't use as often. If you are not feeding a family of seven, you don't need to shop like you're feeding a family of seven. Note to Sarah, note to Sarah. I just shopped how I saw my mum shop, you know? But it's just me right now, so why am I doing that? Anyway, the refillables are all in a box, so if I run out of something, which doesn't happen, you know, every single day, so it's a rare thing that I need to go in this box, but if I run out of something, I look and I'm like, do I have this thing? No, okay, add it to my shopping list. I don't have to rummage through, it's all labeled. In my other drawers, I've got like this bakeware drawer, you guys, I've got this bakeware drawer. It's like all my pots and pans and stands and cupcake things and all the 
fancy stuff for making great cakes. I love baking. Ever since I made my sister's and my friend's wedding cake. Oh, love it. I haven't organized it yet. I've not organized it yet. And part of me is like, I don't really care because I don't do extravagante cakes that often. So it's not that deep, but I should organize that. And then in the middle pull-out drawer, I've just got like little bits and bobs like that you need that are accessible that I do use very often. Um, so that's great. I've got like my cling films and all those things. I do want to get a dispenser, but for now that'll do, donkey, that'll do, that'll do. I've got like my measuring jugs. On the left then, we've got my Tupperware. I love, I've been meal prepping again, you guys. I've been meal prepping. I can cook, you know. I don't cook, but I can if I want to. And I've been meal prepping and it's, it's the best. These. Tupperwares, I gave away. First of all, I gave away all the Tupperware I don't want to use. All those mismatching Liz, get out, get out of my house, get out of my house. And what I kept were the ones that were usable, but I don't love. And those are my giveaway Tupperwares because I've learned that I love to give away food. I always make too much food and I love to give it away. And so I can put it in this fancy little glass Tupperware box for someone. And sometimes it might not come back, but that's okay because they're not my daily bread you know, Tupperwares, you know what I mean? They're not my day-to-day -day Tupperwares. They're my cute ones, but that, you know, aren't perfect. So I can give those ones away. And I, you know, be blessed. Most of them come back. Some of them don't be blessed with those Tupperwares. But then I have my daily bread Tupperwares. No one's taken those. No, no, I don't care. You can carry that agussi out in your hands. You're not taking my daily Tupperwares. These bad boys I got from Amazon. I'll link them down below. They are so good. Rain or shine, no staining, no leaking. Perfect size, in my opinion. Perfect size for a meal. So stackable, I just love them. So those are my Tupperwares, they all sit there. And essentially what I've done is I now use this cupboard for stuff that I don't need to see. Does that make sense? I don't need to see my Tupperware because I know what's in there. So when I need it, I just grab it. And I usually grab it by the bucket load, right? Because I'm, I'm cooking. So it's not like I'm taking something out to get to something else to, you know, there's nothing lost in the back because I already know, oh, it's just Tupperware. And then in the bottom, I've now got like some drawers and trays that I don't use very often. But the good thing is they double out as a pullout because um, I watched this one video on YouTube. I can't remember the name, I'm so sorry. But she basically was like, you never want anything to be in the back or at the bottom. At the back or at the bottom where things go to die is what she said. And it was genius because it's so, so true. You need to be able to see everything. So what this does, this little pullout mechanism with the uh, tray, is it allows me to see stuff that's in the back. Stuff I don't use that often, but every now and then I can just pull it out and see the stuff that is in the back and it's really accessible. And that's been brilliant because you can actually buy attachable pull-out drawers, but they, they cost like, I don't know, 40 quid per one. And as I'm renting here, that just wasn't worth it to me. I didn't want to have to make any permanent, you know, screw on fixtures. The things that I've shown you so far, none of them needed screws apart from the wine glasses, but that's in a wall and that's fine. I can fill those holes and it will be fine. Whereas on things like tiles and actual kitchen cabinets, I don't want to be screwing holes in them because you can't just fill them with dry plaster. I've been talking for like 37 minutes straight. I, I should edit this down to make it shorter, but um, guys, it's life changing. I love it. I actually really love it and I'm so, so grateful. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for watching my kitchen video. If you want any more information or if you want like a tips and tricks video, cause this has been like an explanation and a visual show and tell. But if you want a tips and tricks of how I actually did it and like a summary, first of all, go to my Instagram cause I already posted like a screenshot of all summary. So go to at Otung. I was gonna say .com, but just at DRSaroTang. And you will see like a screenshot of a list of like how to organize your kitchen. And that's about it. That's all I have to say. I'm kind of hungry now, so I might go eat. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. Thanks for welcoming me back to YouTube. If you're new here, I'm Sarah. I, uh, well, how do I describe who I am? I'm an actress. I'm a doctor. I am a YouTube keen bean. And I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go. But please join, basically, like the video and subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know what you wanna see next. And I'll see you in my next video. Mm. Love you, bye.